Hi, so this video, if, you, if you're just watching these videos like any videos like any other, other, I have something to tell you about this video. This is a crucial, crucial video if you're interested in JavaScript programming. Because even though ostensibly the topic is just about how to make a HTML button and how to make something happen on your canvas with that button, there's a much bigger topic at play here. Callbacks, JavaScript event callbacks, functions as callbacks how to bind a particular set of code to a particular action on the page. This is basically a building block behind how just about everything in JavaScript works. So in this video, even though we have a very small context, I want to add a button to this page. When I click that button, maybe I want the color of that rectangle to change. The, 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 uh, how that happens, how I'm going to make that happen is like the building block for just about anything you might want to do in the future of your life with programming. But again, sometimes it's good to not do programming and go do other things. So don't get me wrong here. Okay, so let's think about this for a second. I'm gonna come over here and use my whiteboard to think about the page for a second. So this is what the page looks, at, looks like right now. There's an H1 element, a paragraph element, and a canvas. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to get a button appearing here. So I want to see a button here. The way that you get a button to appear there is with the p5 function, create button. Now, of course, as with any of the create functions, it's also possible to add a button just in the HTML file itself. And again, it's, there might be good reasons for doing it that way over this way. But just because we're kind of rolling with the punches here and looking at all, not worrying about those kind of questions too much, I'm going to add the button with the p5.js create button function. So now I want something to happen on the canvas when I click the mouse. Now you know, if you've watched some of the other videos or used p5.js before, you can write a function called mouse pressed and anything you write into that function will execute happen when you click the mouse. So in fact, let's make that happen right now. I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to say, so what do I need? I want the color, maybe I want the color of the background to change. So I'm going to make a variable called B, BG for background color. And I'm going to give that variable in setup a value of 200. Uh, so now when I run this, you can see it's the same. The, it's a grayscale color with a value of 200. That's the background. And then I'm going to add this function mouse pressed and in mouse pressed I'm going to change the color to a random grayscale color. Now you you know for you when you're doing this make it RGB give it three random numbers all sorts of ways you can do it but I'm just trying to demonstrate something simply I'm going to click. Click every time I click on the canvas you can see that the background is changing color. By the way anytime I click over here or down here or up here so you can think of this mouse pressed function as kind of like this global function that uh, any at global, so it's kind of the right word. It's also kind of the wrong word. But what I mean by that is it's the mouse pressed event for like the entire universe, the universe being this page. What I want to do is I want to create a button and I'm going to say, I'm going to give some, when I say create button, I'm going to give it some text and we're going to see, look at that. Now there's a button on the page. What I want to do is when I click on that button, have the background change. Hey, look, it works. I finished. We can end this video now, right? Wrong. The problem is I can also still click here and I can also still click here and over here. What I want to do is I want to say this mouse pressed function, I want to attach that mouse pressed function somehow to that button. So only this code executes only when the button is executed. What I mean by that again over here in terms of this diagram is I want to take this mouse press function and I want to make it a callback. Callback for that button. Meaning when the button is pressed, the button calls back. I don't know why you're calling back. I like to call forward or whatever, call sideways. It doesn't really, it doesn't really matter here. But the point is the, the, I love, when you press the button, it calls back to the function and this code executes. Right now, this global function executes anywhere. How do you attach it to, how do you attach a particular function to a particular object to sort of bind that event of, the, of clicking that object to a particular set of code? 
So before I could do this, I actually want to change something about this example that I think will make this uh, make a little bit more sense as I go forward. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write another function called change color. And I'm going to put this line of code in that function. And then I'm going to call change color in here. So this is ultimately exactly the same thing that I had before. When I click the mouse, call this change color function, uh, which when the change color function is executed, it picks a new color. That new color is the background. So again, same thing. I can click anywhere. I can click on the button. I can click up here. I get a new background color every single time. So what I want to do next is, I'll be back over here. I'm like doing this really slowly because this is so like important. And maybe I'm doing this too slowly. Um, what I need to do is I'm, right, let's, let's change how I've written this here. Really, what I want to do is I want to take this change color function and attach that to the mouse pressed event for this button. And how, what, how do I have a reference to that button? The way I have a reference to that button is by storing the result of create button in a variable. I've lost room here, but I'm taking create button and storing the result of that in this variable button. Now, instead of writing a generic global all universe encompassing mouse pressed function, I am going to call mouse pressed on the button itself. I want to say call this function mouse pressed on the button. And when I do that, what I'm saying is when the mouse is pressed on the button, I want something, the thing that I pass into the parentheses here, to happen. When I press the mouse on the button, I want this to happen. When I press the mouse on the button, I want this callback to be executed. What is the callback? Change color. So this is the crazy thing. It's not so crazy, really, because it's how JavaScript works, but it's, it's a little bit insane that I can have a function name change color. I can reference that function here, telling the button to call this function when you press the mouse. Now, this isn't magic. This is the way the P5 library works. And in fact, a kind of crucial piece of information that I have forgotten to mention is this all works because there is, there is the p5.js library, and there is also something called the p5.dom.js library. So the DOM library is what is allowing some of this additional functionality to work. Some of that additional functionality is a mouse pressed event for every single DOM element. Paragraphs, h1 tags. So, you know, I'm using button because it's a nice scenario. So uh, let's just get to it, OK? So over here, now what I want to do is I don't want to call change color inside this global mouse pressed anymore. Instead, I want to have a button variable. I want to say button equals create button. And I want to say button mouse pressed change color. And so now. Here we are. This is the moment of truth, right? Let's look at this page, right? I could click here on the canvas. Nothing happens. I could click here on this text up here. Nothing happens. But now if I click on this button, only when I click on the button does the background color change. And that's because I have said this particular function should execute when you press on the button. This is really lovely because it went uh, um, some video some time ago. I, I looked at like how do you know where you're clicking on the canvas? We need a big if statement. If you like the mouse let, where you clicked is like greater than this part and less than this part and greater than this part and less than this. you have to do all this detection. Now all of that is handled for you by the browser itself and sort of managed for you by the P5JS library. So. Um, you know, <laughs> there's so much more to this, um, and I think that I'm going to get to more and more scenarios um, as I look at uh, more and more examples. But I think this is just this is kind of a nice like place to stop for this particular video. And what I'd say to you for your exercises: add a button, add more than one button, add ten buttons, add two buttons, and see what you can get. Can you make something change color? Can you make something go faster? Can you what can you change on the page? My camera just shut off. Um, which is good timing because I'm about to stop this video. So um, in the next video, what I'm going to look at is CSS and styling and how you can style elements. And I think uh, when I do that, it'll sort of come back to more events and how you might change uh, element styles uh, based on certain types of interaction. Okay. Um, 
I'm gonna now hit stop. <laughs>